I'm moving to LA. Let me go ahead and get my house a little bit. TNJ fam, we are back with another video. And as you can see from the title, we are doing something different today, y'all. I have not eaten for the last day and a half to prepare for this, okay? Oh, this, is, this is a lot. This, this is, is a lot. lot. This is a lot. When y'all were talking about, we gonna have fat burger. I mean, fat this, burger. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is like This is the biggest everything. burger what get me? at Fat Burger. I got you the one and a half pound burger with the works. Okay. With the works. Yes. I'm, I'm playing, well, Jarius is playing Jane over there. But Man. it's going straight to these thighs, though. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going nowhere. Right to and, I got, and I got, I think just regular with barbecue sauce. Okay. So, but we all got one and a half palm with skinny fries. Yeah. Skinny fries. Like that matters though. Right. I've had a vegan protein shake today, so I don't know if y'all want to be polite, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start eating. No. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, Jarius, before we get into it, <laughs> what we need to do, baby? We need you guys to <laughs> like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that bell. Click the bell. Click the bell and follow our social media handles below all right mj i know you're ready to get in but yeah. we need we need you to tell them who you are where they can come find on mj you. oh i am malcolm mj harris baby and if you don't know who i am then welcome 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 honey because i'm about to change your life so you can find me on i'm building up my youtube platform okay because i the thing about it is this i started on youtube i started mm -hmm. on youtube what was it like almost 11 years ago, right? I didn't know that. I did. And then what ended up happening was Facebook took off of me a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And okay. so I focused my energy over there, then Instagram became a thing. And so all these millions of viewers every month on those platforms, and I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to come <laughs> home, baby. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, ready to come home. home. Look, I'm ready but, to get this YouTube going. Yes. <laughs> so y'all can find me on my YouTube pages, MJ Harris. I'm sure they'll have like a link in the description sure below will. the video. All right, so let's good. get into this. I don't know how I'm going to eat this. Y'all, this is And I'm wearing white okay. shorts. Y'all ever saw a good burger? Mm. This is a mom. <laughs> you know, you gotta check Tara. This is, this is, you know, I don't eat all this. This is three, three patties, a pound and a half. Okay, I cannot eat two patties. I'm gonna have to take off a patty. Oh, this is so good already. Y'all see I'm drinking my Coke? That's good. That is sad. I guess we should've got napkins, but just, so, go, just go with it. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I'm telling y'all too. Atlanta, get ready to lose them. I, I think that they need to be here in California. Why do you think we need to be here? California. Where else do you go to build startup? Where, do you, where else do you go? California is where you come. LA specifically is where you come to reach audiences around the world. Stars are made here. Stars are made bigger here. And I just feel like, for me personally, being here and changed my life. I mean, my audience has gone up like a thousand percent. It's just really? because of all the resources. I mean, look at where we're at right now. Yeah. You know, like just this the ability true. to shoot high quality content, the ability to be around other creators that you can yeah. collaborate with, the ideas you get being here. It's fabulous. I'll tell you, listen. I would be down possibly to move to LA, but y'all cost of living is high. I feel like I have to make it before I can move here Not because I want to be in Calabasas. Look, well, come on out to get Calabasas. My, I'd to, love for you to join us out there. Yes, join us. Wait, I got to get my. <laughs> Look, okay, look, I gotta join get us. My, <laughs> no, um, here's my thing. This you can't so think from the point of view of how much money you have today. Because you're looking at, well, what can we afford today? You didn't get into this business. Neither of y'all got into this business so you can stay where you're at. You got in this so you can grow, so you can reach more people. And with more people, with more impact, means more money. That's reality. It's not just about the money, it's about the impact. And impact creates income. And so, to me, That's you true. gotta position yourself to be able to have more impact. What they say, if you build it, they will come, yeah. right? So oh. you need to come to a place where you can build it oh, so they can come. You see what I'm saying? This whole idea, I'm gonna wait with that. That just defies the laws of faith and the law of attraction. This says, I'm gonna wait until everything comes to my hands and then I'm gonna make take action. Who the hell has ever done that? There's no success or it's been built on that. Scared money don't make money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, see, my biggest thing is this. You know, I was all down for the movement to LA after we didn't heard it a billion and one times this weekend. Until I looked on Red Fan Zillow and saw that what I can afford. That's what he just said. Atlanta. But listen, I get that, what he was just saying. But it's different when you see. Well, I'm gonna be living in until I make it. Mm -mm. And I like my house. My house is beat. Come on out. Let me tell you this. 
So you want to sacrifice just for a little bit. That's a big sacrifice, MJ. That's My thing a is big this. Sacrifice. If you come to LA, y'all gonna be out creating content every day. You're not sitting in your house all day, every day. It's not just about <laughs> that y'all gonna be creating content, y'all gonna be building relationships, y'all gonna be hustling. I get it. And I've lived in LA almost three years now. I'm on my fourth home. The first home I started with was a home that was very much so very reasonable and affordable based on where I was at at that moment. Then got more coin. I said, well, let me move up a little bit. <laughs> you know, I literally moved upstairs and moved to the penthouse level in the building. I and then I was like, well, this is I'm nice, this penthouse. is great. But let me move to another one, let me move to another one. You can move, you know, you can do that. So you can't think about what it's gonna be like in terms of how does your, how will your bills compare from Atlanta to here. It's about how will being here position you to make more money. I just don't wanna be in no shack when I first come out here. I'm down for the move, but I don't wanna Ain't be nobody in, living no in no damn shack. I want you to consider this. People move out here every day with less skill, less education, and less audience than you guys, right? And they live just fine. So why would y'all be any different? Y'all, this burger is so good. It's so good. I'm trying to figure out how to lift it up and not steal in my white shorts. I'm over here killing it. I don't know. I'm just going in. Let me see. I'm mm -hmm. killing it too. You know what I mean? I'm gonna try to my little skinny fries. You know what? I, they could have maybe because it was it's not hot. My fries could have been a little bit better. But then again, I ain't, ain't got no seasoning on. You breaking it apart. I need to take off this bottom patty. No, I you can't that. I two of these. Look, MJ said he's trying to watch that figure. You I know, am. He was just on Instagram talking about that peach. Y'all want to see my peach? <laughs> Let me show you. Oh, this thing. oh, look. Hold on. Come Do on you with see the this peach. thing with this in my phone in my back pocket? <laughs> This is why you eat one pad at a time. Because at a time. you need to eat this thing. Now let me tell you, husband hunting season is upon us, baby, okay? <laughs> I can lose it once I get him, baby. I get I get my married, my married shape, but you know, listen, until then, baby, I'm gonna eat one patty at a time. Look, and then you gotta do this photo shoot. I'm not telling too much about the photo shoot, but I do have a very revealing photo shoot coming up. <laughs> you gotta follow me to see that one. Follow me, camera. <laughs> Look, follow me, camera. Let me ask you this. How You know, everybody says that moving to LA advances your career, all that stuff, but like, one thing that we have in the South, and you know this, being from the South, yeah. is that Southern hospitality and stuff like that. And you hear all the time about how shady show business can be. Have you encountered that? Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. It's not everyone in show business. What I found in LA is that there are two lanes of people. The people who are really doing it, when I say really doing it, they're like people like you, people like me, like they're really about the business of creating amazing content, whether it's for TV, digital, it doesn't matter. And they are about the business of connecting with other people who want to do it or are positioned to do it or are really doing it. So if you're serious and you position yourself around those people, you will do just fine. Those are the action makers, those are the meeting takers, those are people who will make shit happen. Then you got the other group of people who just want to look like they're doing it. Those those are the most shady ones, okay? Cause they ain't got shit to bring to the table. <laughs> and so they use their shadiness, they use all this stuff to create a facade so you can think that they are more than they are. But the people who about this business are making money, about how you gonna help me, what we gonna do, how we gonna get this collaboration going to get this thing going, to get these pockets filled and help these people change their lives. You know what I mean? So I think that it's just about you being highly selective. And which brings me to the point, one of the advantages that you all have coming to LA is y'all aren't just coming here with a dream and a bus pass. Y'all are coming here with audience. You're coming here with a plan. You're coming here with each other. That's a huge thing. Let me tell you this. You can build twice as fast when you got somebody to build with. You right. know? And from that perspective, I think when you come here, the people who do the best in LA are people who come here knowing their value. Don't come here and let these people tell you what your value is. Oh, we're in LA and we know this and we know that. We'll make you a star. Well, you go, you've already managed to make yourself stars. So I don't need you to make me a star. I just need you to make my star brighter. Oh, right? oh come on. That's a word. And if you don't I do like it, that. somebody else going to do it. That's a word. That's right a word. Right That's a word. It applies to people off camera too. Listen, I'm going to get to where I'm going to. The question is, will you be along with me? Will you give some of this coin too? If not, baby, I can go on to the next person. I ain't going to hold my breath waiting on your ass. <laughs> This weekend was like really eye-opening to the creator world. In what like way? That there's people like us because you don't see it in Atlanta. That's a good point. Um, but we also were able to see a different side of the creator life as well and like Ooh. their their I'm views on things if you're not up to a certain <laughs> stature. like. But let me ask you this. What does that have to do with you? It doesn't matter where you are. There's always going to be someone who's going to try to project their own insecurities, their own stuff onto you because of that. And here's the thing, that's a reflection on them and their insecurities. Because here's the thing, for me, if I'm a confident person and I'm comfortable and confident in where I hold, what I hold in this world, in my position in this world, in my income, what is where you stand, regardless of how I perceive, what does that have to do with me? I don't have no reason to ever talk down to you, treat you as less than. What I have found is that those kind of people, especially in those spaces where they're trying 
my teachers less than they are coming in feeling very insecure. We have to recognize that. People struggle with insecurities, they really do. And so because they struggle with insecurities, rather than just owning, I feel insecure, I feel scared in space, I feel small in this space. I'm gonna try to make other people feel small. It gives them a sense of importance by, oh, you're only doing this, oh, you only have this, yeah. oh, they ain't got shit to do with you. That's their own stuff. Secure people don't try to make other people feel small. So what I'm saying is this, y'all have told me the things y'all are concerned about with LA. What is it within LA that your instincts, your God, your universe, whatever you call out to has already told you about what you could get here? Because you've already heard that. And you wouldn't be exploring the idea of moving because I see it in your head, it's exploring. So what is it about LA that's attractive to you? The main reason that I would move to LA is not to like, oh, like I know that it's gonna like kickstart our career, not kickstart, but like <coughs> our careers in the overdrive. I really think that it's just a sense of community. And it's simple things, like if we have an idea that we want to come to life, it's nowhere for us in Atlanta to like make that happen. Or, you know, they have like the YouTube Black here, they have like the LGBTQ space, and it's just like, you don't have a lot of that. The brands um, all go, the advertising agencies that hire you guys for collaborations, and things yeah. like that, most of those offices premieres, are here. Premieres, movie premieres, events, and everything is here. Like every time we were on with our publicist, it was mm -hmm. just like, oh, it's in LA, it's in LA, it's in LA. And like, we get the, the love and hip hops and the, Growing, no up, growing up hip hop in mm. Atlanta, we get those red carpets, but not like, you know, stuff that the kids can go to, like the SpongeBob. And you know what? That's no shade to Atlanta. That's no shade to like places like Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's just that Atlanta's very urban and very gay friendly, but very urban. urban. And it's just like, in you want more than that. Like, mm -hmm. you, I don't want to be put in a box. I don't want somebody to tell me that, you know, you're black, you're gay, so you appeal to that audience. Like, no, I have a lot to say. The, the thing that excites me about LA is just like, LA just presents the opportunity. It gives you that spark you need mm -hmm. to like motivate you and keep you going. In Atlanta, because there are not so many people that like do what we do, you kind of feel like you're by yourself sometimes. That was exactly why I moved to LA because I was living in DC at the time and there's a lot of people there, a lot of people of color doing very well financially, a lot of people doing very well. And that was very inspiring to see brown people, white people, this people, that people, everybody doing really well. Problem was I got tired of those conversations when I was out when people would say to me, I do videos on Facebook. Oh, okay. How are your little videos doing? No, not you, little videos. Oh, little videos are always something really condescending. You know, how those that's little a, videos do? That's true. And I'm like, you know what? I make probably more money than most of y'all people do. Okay. And I get up whenever the hell I want to get up. I get to make people feel good every day. What you do? Not, I'm not trying Typing. to shame them for what they do, but I'm just saying, I'm not judging your shit. Don't judge mine. And I got tired of those conversations. What I realized is that it's not my job to change people's minds. It's my job to put myself in a space where people, where it's more likely to have people around me that have mindsets that are complementary to my mindset. The question you have to answer for yourself is, do you want to put yourself in a space where you can be supported? I think that's the question throughout our life in general, not just for the entertainment industry, but life. We can't control other people. The only thing we have control of is ourselves. So if a space that we're in is not serving us or it has a capacity to limit us from becoming who we want to become, when do we take ownership of the fact that we've got the ability to put ourselves in a different space. Y'all, I, I feel like I'm about to start, you know, you, you know how you get that little, that little shimmer down your spine? That little tingle. That little tingle, okay? I'm over here soaking it up, y'all. I hope so, y'all are too. If y'all in Atlanta, you better drop some comments and let us know reasons we should stay, baby, because the levels have shifted. But you know what? People feel that by helping you, it somehow is taking away from them when you trying to do something, right? And they got something going on. And you're just like, well, if you don't mind me asking, like, well, how much did you get paid for this? Or how much are they you paying secretive. for that? Then it's just like, oh, you know, everybody get all secretive and everybody get all sheltered and they don't want to talk about, you know, stuff I like that. Remember. Listen, don't get offended. Now don't go up and ask somebody how much they make every single time. But I feel like if you have built that relationship and you are in that same space, if more people knew, then it would be like a... It's it would be important. fair, you know, it would be fair on where you're at. And Especially I feel like in the entertainment industry, because one of the things is within the entertainment industry is that in a lot of cases, people of color get underpaid. It is not that people are offering us less money, it's often that we, we can present smaller quotes or smaller rates, like this 
is what I, this is what it costs to get me because we don't know. Yep. And so because they're trying to get into this space, and this isn't just people of color, this could be anyone trying to get into a new space, but we often see it heavily with people of color. We'll say, well, okay, well, this is, you know, I, I it just costs this much for me to feature your product, for me to do this with this collaboration. And nice. so when we share rates with each other, it allows us to share information so that we, so that you have something to go in with. And it doesn't hurt me for you to get a good contract because by you getting a good contract, that gives you good relationships and you're going to come back to me like, hey, they actually need somebody just like you and this with you. And so we're sharing see, and we're growing together. See, that's, that's where the conflict comes in because I think the misconception <laughs> is that, all right, if they offering me X amount and I tell you that that's what they offer me and you go get it, they going to somehow lower me next time or they might like you more so they won't ask me next time. Oh, you know what the one of the biggest issues in our space is? Mm -hmm. If I collaborate with them, how is that going to like benefit me? Or I'm too big. Like, you know, I don't I don't have like the time to, to do that. And I kind of get that to a certain degree. Terrell kind of touched on it. I just feel like this, if you are the right person, I have no problem with like helping you. I'll use the example of us today right now, right? So for me, you know, I've been doing these videos a, a longer, you mm -hmm. know, and so my audience is, is larger because of just that extended mm -hmm. time period of doing it. And so if, if I was if I was one of those people like you talked about who said purely just based on size of overall audience, well, they're not, they're not the same audience that I have in terms of size. Well, how does this benefit me? Right. Then I wouldn't be sitting here. My perspective, I looked at you guys. Number one, I love everything about your story, Thank okay? You. And I follow you guys. I'm always liking your, page, your pictures and stuff like that. So I like you all as human beings. From a business side, I said it's still complimentary because at the end of the day, you all have come through a door of doing well within YouTube, and that's a door that I'm just re-engaging. You all can teach me. So to me, it's about are we on complimentary paths? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are we on complimentary paths? It's not so much about who's bigger, who's this, who's that. It's about are we on complimentary paths? It's not just about where we are today, but where you all going. You guys are going to be huge, okay? And so to me, it's like, why not make each other a part of one another's tribes as we go forward? Because if we go forward and things get big, I'm telling you this, new level, new devil. And you're going to have everyone clamoring at you as things get really, really big. Trust me, this will happen. I know mm -hmm. from experience. And you you don't know who to let in. So to me, those people who support you from day one and say, I just want to help you do well. I'm going to take time out my schedule. Those are the people who you want to keep close to you throughout the path because you know that their desire to support you is sincere. Here. And then it's, it's also an opportunity to create content. You, you'll you be surprised how many people go through blocks where they can't think of what content mm -hmm. to bring. Content fresh... creation is like a beast that keeps on eating. Everybody thinks it's you so all... easy. No. Everybody thinks it's so easy. You just come on the camera and you're just like, no. do you know these challenges, like to, to not only do like certain challenges that people do, but to put your own spin on them because you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over, to sit there and think of ideas, to talk about things that no. really matter, being selective. I've seen people who just cut on the camera and place 50 ads in a video and it's just like and they just, eat it up too. and don't edit and don't edit it to like add anything in uh, if you think about it it's a YouTube channel as if you're paying for cable TV like yeah. it's a channel so we try to make it to where it's engaging like so that you guys keep coming back different seasons and it's just like you have to think of new it's content of and so it's like it's a lot and I think people lose sight of that sometimes when you like cut on a camera and they're just like well where's the video where's the video and it's just like listen guys this is on top of working other jobs, we got the kids. It's like it's a lot. You're running a business, so yes. it's like you have a but full time. Can, but job. let me ask you both this: Don't you love it? I do love it. When that camera comes out, I love it. It's the ability to reach infinite numbers of people through that camera. Yep. You have no idea what's yep. going to happen. You don't know what's going to what's going to happen. So the ability to get in front of a camera and do that, and you see the messages that people write into yep. you. You changed my life. You inspired me. You did this. You did that. This is to me. This is a form of ministry, not to be spiritual, but this is a form of ministry from the from just the very the very literal definition just saying that this is a form of helping yeah. people yeah. and so for me it's a joy to do it but it's not easy yeah. Yeah. work to do and it takes consistency and dedication even though it's not easy it becomes such a natural part of yeah. your existence yeah. it's already a natural yeah. part of your existence that you don't even yeah. you don't even think about it yeah anymore, you know at VidCon we had a really really good conversation with a, a pretty big uh, social media person and she shared some things that I don't know about you Tara but like it like really put things into perspective for me and it, and it could be applied not only to YouTube but just like to life in general that just like you said consistency uh, being creative like and, and putting your all into every single thing that you do will literally get you to where you want to be always it, it sucks sometimes because it's like especially for people who are doing positive things it's usually harder you know we're it's not, not drama we're it's not drama yeah. it's not being over sexualizing I get it you know do you by any means but it's just like for me, I don't want to contribute to that. 
it would be amazing to turn on TV and to see positive representations of like our community. One major thing that I took away was we asked her, you know, like, so what do you have next? And so like she went through and like yes. told us like what she had going on. But she was like, the funny thing is, no, she was like, the great thing about that is that's all of what I know of. That's what I know of right now because God, you never know. You never what know. He has. Never God know. can dream a bigger dream for you than you can dream of for yourself. And so that 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 did it for me. I was like, yes, ma'am. I'm bringing it back to the LA move. For a okay. Second. So when we had dinner the other day, mm -hmm. one of the things that Terrell mentioned to me was that the idea of moving. That obviously you have to think about the fact that how are you going to support your family? You know, as you continue to grow this part of this. Because I mean, the entertainment space is great. It's great money, but income's like this. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like it's not like a steady paycheck. So we had talked about like different things that you could do. So you work in corporate recruitment. Right. So he helps people to get jobs. And so with that said, I would say if you're going to jump off the cliff into entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. right, jump with the parachute. And so I'm not one who say, just quit your job and, and just figure it out as you go. That's a very scary route, especially when you've got little ones to feed as yeah. well. Consider the idea of how you could switch what you're doing in terms of corporate c recruitment, how you could do it as an independent contractor. And this is a lesson for anyone out there looking at how you can take what you're doing and doing it as an independent contractor, meaning that businesses will hire you on a contract basis to help them out for a period of time. That way you're not a full-time employee because often that will pay a higher rate. You can work less doing that so you're bringing in cash flow from it while creating more time in your schedule to build what you ultimately are more passionate about. Right. Yeah, right. And so I always like to help make dreams happen. Here's what I did. I reached out to a good friend of mine. Um, his name is Marion E. Brooks. He is one of the top black executives in a Fortune 100 company. And one of his companies that he owns is called Impressions Staffing. This is a boutique, high-end okay, high staffing end. and executive headhunting firm. And for him, I was talking with him, and you know, I just get on the phone. You get on the horn, and you just say, you know, you never, you know, see, when you're dealing with all that 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 strong masculine energy, he's got so much masculine energy, you'll meet him. Uh, you can't just tell him what you want. I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you girls how to handle this, okay? <laughs> What you have to do is you Listen have to just kind of imply a little bit. And I was like, I said, I said, I said, I said, you own that business impressions. Like, oh yeah, it's fabulous, great company. I said, I said, I know it's fabulous, it's wonderful. <laughs> I said, I said, you know, with all the things you're doing, it wouldn't just be, it wouldn't just be fabulous just to have someone who's sharp and got so much experience just to be able to work within it just to help you continue to grow it, you know? Someone who's flexible and just, you know, they don't need to be washed over all the time because you don't have time to be doing that, a busy executive like yourself. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Have you ever considered that? Of course I've thought about it. That'd be fabulous. I think it'd be great. I said, well, I don't know if you've already thought about this, but I think I may know someone who could help you. But if you don't want their name, that's fine, because I know you've got all these things already taken care of, of course. And he said, he said, what's the name? I told him about you. Told him about who you who you work with. Told him everything, right? Sent to your page, everything like that. He's got the whole story. Oh, this fabulous. This fabulous. This is great. This is great. This is great. So are we going to connect right now? I was like, it's Sunday night. <laughs> I'm going to do a call right now. But I will be sure to tell the guys. So if that's something you're interested in, what he's specifically looking for is he wants someone who can take on an executive role. To me, it's the, this is what collaboration is all about. Yeah. Is this something you'd be interested in? I'm very interested. I'm, okay. moving, I'm moving to LA. <laughs> Look, I'll be in LA. Look, let me go ahead and get my house slipped. <laughs> no, no if, you're gonna be, if you're gonna be a house husband in LA, you need yoga pants. You know, oh, that's, that's, ooh, that's the new house yes, code in LA, yoga your, your yoga pants. Babe, can I be a house husband? With the little weights, you gotta walk down the street with the weights. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yes, straight. Look, that straight. is amazing. Yes, I'm definitely interested. I'm sure to so connect awesome. you guys. He's very interested. Y'all, I, I did not fantastic. know that he was This was like a total this. surprise. Yeah, it was a complete surprise. I said, I'm going to wait to tell y'all spot. I cannot <laughs> deal. Well, on that note, I got to go go down on the executive call before my flight. Yeah. So, thank you so much, MJ, of for course, joining of us. Course. Make sure you guys check out his channel, his social media. Yes. They're all the same. MJ Harris Speaks. It's MJ Harris Speaks, and I'll give you the link for the description. We'll yes. be sure to drop it and insert it here. So you guys go check it out. Show love and comment T and J fam. We love you guys so much. And until next time. Bye. That is that amazing. Was an amazing conversation. Yeah. It was great. Of course. Right, right, of course. I'll, I'll get the yeah. bottom. Like the better than shea butter. She yeah. like, right on my legs. We need you guys to. Wait a minute. Who's. Make sure you direct it. At I said, Jari. Jay, back up some now. You know, we don't play all that. that what so happened? Look, 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 look okay. Y'all know what's good. <laughs>